In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at inflection points. So we want to make use of inflection points uh, to help us understand the shape of our graph. Inflection points are related to your second derivative. To examine the second derivative, we first must consider our function f prime. So for a given function f, let's assume this is a function f here. Notice that as we go to calculate the slopes, notice that if I go to calculate the slopes of the tangent equations along this curve, you know, this slope perhaps is 3, this might be 2 and a half, and you can see here this might be a 1, and here we have a slope of 0, and then as I move down the curve, again, it becomes maybe negative 0.5, and, you know, roughly in the same spot, we'll have a slope of negative 1, negative 2 and a half, etc., and you're at negative 3. As you move along the curve here, you'll notice that your slopes are decreasing throughout, and when your slopes are decreasing throughout, that means the second derivative would therefore be negative. When your second derivative is negative, the function is said to be concave downwards. Notice another characteristic of concave downward functions are that its tangent equations always lie above the function. Notice here to not get confused with the concept of the first derivative. Labeling this point here c f at c, notice that our function f is increasing from a to c, and our function f is decreasing from c to b. However, that means that our first derivative is positive on this interval and negative on this interval. Let's take a look at the definition of concave upwards. For concave upwards, notice that the slopes as I move along the curve of this function here, perhaps this is a negative 5, a negative 4, a negative 3, a negative 2, negative 1, you can see um, that they end up increasing throughout the motion along this curve. So now as I move along this curve, my slopes of my tangent equations along the curve are increasing throughout. Because of that, my second derivative is greater than zero on the interval. And when that happens, your function is concave upwards. Notice concave upwards functions have the property that its tangent equation always lies below your function. Again, this is not to be confused with your first derivative. Your function is decreasing from A to C and increasing from C to B. That is, your first derivative will be less than 0 on the interval from A to C, and your first derivative will be greater than 0 on the interval from C to B. Let's summarize the results Below. Summarizing our results, we have the concavity test. If you have a function f at x such that its second derivative is greater than zero on an interval i, then that function is said to be concave upwards on that interval. If you have a function such that its second derivative is less than zero on an interval i, its function will then be said to be concave downwards. Let's look at some examples. So for our first example here, we have a function f at x is x squared. We already know it's concave upwards, but just to show you, if you go ahead and take your second derivative, you'll find f double prime at x is 2, and that's always greater than 0, and because of that, the function is concave upwards. Let's look at another. For the following function here, we have f at x is ln of x. If you go ahead and take your second derivative, you find that your second derivative of the ln of x is negative 1 over x squared. This is always going to be less than 0, and because of that, the function will be said to be concave downwards. Visually looking at the function, you can see this is your ln of x function. And we can see here, as I move along the curve, we see that the slopes of the tangent equations are decreasing throughout. And because of that, it is concave downwards. The question now becomes is what happens when a function goes from concave upwards to concave downwards? Well, that function is experiencing an inflection point. Inflection points happen when either the function goes from concave upwards to concave downwards or concave downwards to concave upwards. One example of that function would be y equals x cubed. Notice that for the function, if we go ahead and take our first derivative, we get 3x squared, and our second derivative is 6x. Well, notice if we examine the function f double prime at 0, we get 0, and therefore this is an inflection point. Drawing a number line and examining our inflection point to the right and left of 0, we find that the function's second derivative is positive to the right of 0 and negative to the left of 0. 
the slopes of my tangent equations are decreasing up until I hit zero. And that's illustrated by the fact that f double prime on this interval is less than zero. Likewise, the slopes of my tangent equations are now increasing to the right of zero. And that's illustrated by the fact that f double prime is greater than zero on this interval. Furthermore, notice that my tangent equations all lie above the curve to the left of zero. And to the right of zero, my tangent equations all lie below the curve. So in summary, the function y equals x cubed has an inflection point at zero. And from that, we can see that the function is concave downwards from negative infinity to zero and concave upwards from zero to infinity. Lastly, notice that f prime at x is equal to 3x squared. 3x squared is always greater than zero. And because of that, we know our function is increasing on its domain. Visually, we can see that here the function is always increasing. So in summary, a function is concave downwards on the interval negative infinity to zero, and we have f double prime is less than zero. The function is concave upwards on the interval zero to infinity, and because of that, f double prime at x is greater than zero. And lastly, our function f is increasing across the entire interval. As we just talked about, its first derivative is greater than zero. Let's see how we can use inflection points and the second derivative to identify local maxes and mins. We now have the second derivative test. What the second derivative test says, if f prime at c equals zero, and f double prime at c is greater than zero, then our function has a local minimum at c. On the other hand, if f prime at c is zero, and f double prime at c is less than zero, we have a local maximum at c. That this is just a result of our concavity test. f double prime at c being greater than zero means that the function is concave upwards, which means it has a local minimum. f double prime being less than zero means that the function is concave downwards and therefore hits a maximum at c. Let's take a look at some examples. So for our first example here, they give us a function uh, f at x is x cubed minus 12x plus 5. If we take our derivative and we can go ahead and find our critical values, we find that we end up getting plus or minus 2 as the critical values. Taking the second derivative here, we find f double prime at x is 6x. If we evaluate the second derivative at its critical points, so in this case here we take f double prime at 2 and evaluate that we get 12, and f double prime at negative 2, evaluate that we get negative 12, we see here that f double prime is greater than 0 at 2, and we have therefore a local minimum at 2. And on the other hand, f double prime at negative 2 is less than 0, and because of that, we have ourselves a local maximum at negative 2. So you can see here, using the second derivative test applied at the critical points, we can determine whether we have a function that is a local minimum or local maximum without having to analyze the intervals of f prime. Let's take a look at the next example. For the next example here, we want to find all maximum and minimum values of the following function. f prime at x is 4x squared times x minus 6, and f double prime at x, notice here your critical points for this question will be 0 and 6. Notice here I took f double prime at 0 and I got 0. Because of this, your second derivative test has failed. And this happens only when f double prime at your critical point is 0. Since it wasn't greater than 0 or less than 0, we're now in a situation where we cannot use the second derivative test to assess whether we're at a local max or local min. Therefore, we have to go to our interval, in this case f prime, and examine. Upon examining, we see here at 0, we do not have a local max or local min because the function is decreasing throughout. Examining f double prime at the other critical point, in this case 6, we find we get 144, which is greater than 0. Because of that, we have a local minimum at 6. Let's take a look at the graph. So here's the graph of the function we just discussed. Notice here we have our inflection point at 0. Recall at this point here we had f double prime at 0 equaling 0, and f prime at 0 was also 0. And we had seen, if you recall, on the interval with, of f prime, we saw that the function was decreasing from negative infinity to 0 and decreasing again from 0 all the way to 6. This is our other critical value, where f prime at 6 was 0, 
And notice here, our other inflection point was right here. This is F double prime at four was zero. We found F double prime at four to be zero. And notice here, this is where the function goes from a situation where the tangent lines are now above the curve. And then once we pass that x value of four, now the tangent equations are below your curve. And because of that, your f double prime at this value here was greater than zero. So we have concave upwards from four to infinity, and that's illustrated by the fact that f double prime from four to infinity was greater than zero. We had concave downwards from zero to four, and that's illustrated by the fact that your slopes of your tangent equations are all above the curve. And then from negative infinity to zero, our slopes of the tangent equations were below the curve, and we got that this was concave upwards from negative infinity to zero. Okay, that concludes today's lesson on inflection points and the second derivative test. Thank you.